Here's a lucky fellow. He's just got a motorcycle. He's not had any training, but he feels that anyone can ride quite easily. Starting off, well, that wasn't difficult. Speeding up, child's play, nothing to it. Faster and faster. He's really enjoying himself. Any fool can learn to start a motorcycle and ride it away, but stopping it is much more difficult. You see, when you set off, you can take your own time. But so often, particularly in an emergency, stopping has to be an instant decision. Let's start all over again. We'll have a look at the machine and learn how to stop it. On this machine, there are two brakes, both operated by levers on the handlebars. Like most modern mopeds, the front brake is operated by the lever on the right and the rear brake by the lever on the left. To get the feel of the brakes, let's push the machine along. Most mopeds have a control to disengage the engine so that they can be wheeled or pedaled easily. So first, check that this is off. The instructor explains that both brakes should always be applied to stop the machine. Both brakes all the time. Okay. Now Chris has a go. He starts to get the feel of the brakes. It's better to apply the front one just before the rear, as this gives more efficient braking. Later, the student can sit on the machine and pedal it along. But in any case, braking instruction is continued until Chris is completely used to the feel of the brakes. Then the next stage. Start the engine. But first, we have to reconnect it. Always stand on the left of the machine, away from the traffic. The best way to start the engine is with the moped on the stand, using the pedal as a kickstart. Keep the weight on the handlebars, so that the back wheel is kept well clear of the ground. First, turn on the fuel tap. If the engine is cold, we have to close the choke before starting. This machine is fitted with a decompression lever, which operates a valve on the cylinder head making the engine easy to turn over. To start the engine, the throttle should be about one-third open. The front brake applied and the weight forward on the handlebars. The pedal is moved to the top and the decompressor lever on the left operated to let the engine turn over easily. Start the engine with a swinging kick, releasing the decompressor so that the engine fires and regulate the speed with the throttle. As the engine warms up, the choke is gradually opened. With the engine running, the back wheel is turning under power. And that's why we have to keep the weight on the handlebars and the back wheel off the ground. For the same reason, it's essential to stop the back wheel by closing the throttle and applying the rear brake before taking the machine off the stand. And always check that the stand has swung clear of the ground. What happens if you don't stop the wheel? Well, watch this. We lose more instructors that way. Now let's watch Chris doing it correctly. Petrol on, choke closed. Front brake applied and weight forward on the handlebars. Operate decompressor. Kick down on pedal, releasing decompressor. Regulate the engine speed with the throttle. When the engine is running smoothly, close the throttle, brake the rear wheel and ease the machine forward off the stand. Check that the stand has come up clear of the ground. Now, to ride under power for the first time. Chris is still not very confident, so the instructor allows him to keep his feet down in the short movements between brake applications. Stop. Now again. Stop. Not until the instructor is completely satisfied that Chris can stop the machine as and when the need arises does he let him ride away with his feet up. And you'll notice that he's still very much in control of the situation. 
Okay, a little bit severe that. Right, come on then, Chris. This time you're all on your own, get your balance, come on, get the throttle on. Pedals, and round the block and back to me. So, Chris has been taught the basic techniques for starting and stopping his moped on the practice ground. All he needs now is more practice. The sports moped is a more sophisticated machine which has controls just like a motorcycle. To continue his training, Chris's instructor shows him the differences. On this type of machine, the pedals are usually locked off and used as footrests. The right hand lever still works the front brake, but the rear brake is now pedal operated by the right foot. The balance of this type of machine is quite different. To get used to the feel of the machine, Chris wheels it around in a figure of eight. A good way to get used to the brakes on any motorcycle is to get someone to push you along. Remember again to apply the front brake slightly before the rear brake. On a motorcycle, the left hand lever operates the clutch, which is used in conjunction with the foot operated gear lever. Before we can start the machine, we have to turn on the petrol, close the choke, and on this type of machine, switch on the ignition. Check to see the gears are in neutral. This is indicated by a green light in the speedometer. The machine is started by a slight opening of the throttle and kicking down on the kickstart lever. Because the gear lever is in neutral, the rear wheel does not spin round when the engine fires. So remember before starting, check that the gear lever is in neutral and the green indicator light is on. So that he can get the feel of the clutch and gears, we'll let Chris start the machine on the stand. With the engine running, Chris pulls in the clutch lever and moves the gear lever down into first gear. The clutch is used to transmit the power from the engine to the gearbox and rear wheel. When the clutch lever is pulled in, the drive is disconnected. The clutch must be operated each time the driver wishes to move off, stop or change gear. To move smoothly away, the clutch lever is gently released whilst the throttle is opened. Chris practices this with the rear wheel clear of the ground. Note the correct riding position, knees gripping the tank and feet level and parallel with the machine. Normally the engine would be started with both wheels on the ground. Push the machine forward off the stand Straddle the machine, switch on and check that the gear lever is in neutral. Swing out the kickstart, check the stand is clear of the ground and start the engine. Pull in the clutch lever, engage first gear and gradually ease out the clutch lever whilst at the same time gently opening the throttle to move smoothly away. When stopping, close the throttle, pull in the clutch lever and apply the brakes. And don't forget to put the gear lever into neutral before releasing the clutch. Practice continues until Chris can stop and start the machine smoothly at all times. Learning to stop and start on a training ground like this means that pupils can master the techniques without having to bother about traffic. Later, when they venture out into actual traffic conditions, they'll be able to concentrate more on road procedure and hazards without having all their attention taken up with controlling their machines. Chris takes the first steps towards learning to drive on a road by practicing stopping at an indicated point. So now you know all about stopping and starting on the training ground, let's have a look at some of the things which could cause you to have to stop on the road.
Always remember, no matter how good you become at moving off and riding your machine, it's the ability to stop it smoothly, safely and quickly when necessary that sets you on the right course to becoming a good motorcyclist.